say a little bit about my sense of home and how that's evolved over the years. I'm a, a transplant from Eastern Canada, from Halifax originally, and I've always considered myself to be really tied to the ocean, particularly. And it was a it was a kind of a hard transition for me moving to, to Northern BC. But obviously, the place where you are is is what finds its way into your work most of the time. And um, I guess for me, time and tide has really been thinking about changes in like seasons, seasons in my life, um, the way I relate to to the place where I live uh, has a, a fair bit to do with dreams and my kind of inner life. Uh, and and I guess mo mainly transitions. It's a, it's a show about transitions, um, transitional times, times between sort of light and dusk, uh, transitional places in nature, um, lots of sort of watery things and reflective things and uh, for me those are those are all fairly poignant and, and closely related to how I think about my own place in the world and how it changes. It's it's kind of everything for me. I think in a lot of ways I think about painting as the way that I relate to living in the world. It's it's the kind of organism I think of myself as being. I think of people as being kind of meaning-making animals and the way that I make meaning is that I, I paint and sometimes when I'm feeling, I don't know, lost in paintings or, or, or worried about paintings, I, I, I think what is it about this particular activity that, you know, it's really just smearing colored rocks on fabric that, that makes it so meaningful. I really love Night River. This is one of my absolute favorites. Probably this one and the big origin myth in the other room. And it's partly because this painting, there's not a lot in it. It's fairly dark. Um, there's not a huge amount of, of information in this painting, um, but it contains an entire little world. And it's a world that really means a lot to me. It's a, it's a kind of, uh, it refers to you know, walks that I take with my friends along the river and, you know, the little fish that I watch and the sort of my fascination with, with moving water and, and those ideas. And it's also, um, it's me thinking about a world that doesn't contain me at all. The river at night is its own universe and in no way do I have any impact on the little lives that are going on in there. And I love to think about that. I love the, the way that it, it moves me out of my own dramas and my own little part of being alive and into something that is mysterious and different and that I can't really find a way into because it's not my place. And so that's one of my favorite things about painting landscapes, especially landscapes like this, is that they give me an opportunity to kind of paint myself out of the picture. This is a, it's very emotional, this painting. It definitely contains a lot of me, but it also contains a world that has nothing to do with me, that I love, but that isn't mine. And I, I really appreciate that about this painting. So this is Encomium, which is a painting that I made specifically for this show uh, on pretty short notice. Like I decided when I, you know, with an idea of what the space was like, uh, that I wanted another humongous piece. Um, and so I made one and it was, it was challenging because I generally, I do paint fairly quickly usually, uh, but I didn't have a very clear idea of what I wanted with this painting. I kept trying to introduce sort of elements of more traditional landscape into it. So like a vanishing point and uh, various sort of foreground details. And then I realized that what it is, is it's kind of an impossible painting. It's a, it's a watery reflective piece, but it's the kind of reflection that um, you'd have to be hovering over it and not casting a shadow in order for this, this painting to happen. When I'm thinking about paintings, I, I look at everything really carefully. I, I pay a lot of attention to the world and um, for me, attention and love are, are kind of indistinguishable. I look very closely at puddles and, and reflected light and all of those things that make their way into my work because they're the things that fascinate me and that attach me to life and also to painting. I 
I think that my work is probably, as I get older and I get more established, I get braver and my work tends to get a little more abstract, a little more personal. And the thing that I talked about with this painting about painting myself out of the picture has become less of a, less of a pressing concern for me. I used to worry almost about about there being an element of narcissism about painting about my feelings or painting about my experiences. And at this point, I feel like, you know, I have this life. I have this one life that belongs to me and I can only make the paintings that I can make. I can't make anybody else's paintings. I can only make mine. And so um, my paintings in a lot of ways are kind of journals for me. They they show me where I am in, in my life. And so in the next five years, I don't know, my kids are getting older, I'm getting older, things change and it's unpredictable. It's hard to say exactly where that'll take me, but I, I hope that it takes me to a place that is courageous and that in five years, when I look back at this work, that I am happy with it and that I wouldn't do anything the same. That's what I hope. I hope everything will change.